Alright, I wonder how much Photoshop even is these days. The subscription service now, which is stupid. 264 a year? Nah, nah, we're done. We're done. Ladies and gentlemen and everything between, my name is Matt Paradoxition, and today I'm going to be showing you Paint.net. Now, if you don't know what Paint.net is, that's totally fine. That's what we're here for. It's a free software, believe it or not, and it allows you to do super amazing image and photo editing. So let me tell you about it. First, you're going to want to navigate to this page here. It's getpaint.net, which is a little bit of a trick. The website isn't actually paint.net. I'm not sure what that website would be, actually. Nothing. Anyway, back to what we were doing. This is a really cool little software that is absolutely free. If you get it on the Windows Store, it is a little bit more expensive, and by that I mean it's like 10 bucks. But you don't really need to get that version because it's right here for free. And there's several different places to download it, but you'll want to download it right here at .pdn. Which will bring you to this page, and you'll just choose Free Download Now. Bada bing, bada boom, let me show you the features. So after installing and opening Paint.net, this is what you'll be greeted with. Just a blank canvas and a bunch of things going on. So I think it's probably best if I break down a little bit what's actually happening before I start showing you all the plugins you can get. Because there are a bunch! To start things off, we're going to want to take a look at what tools we have, which is right over here in the upper left hand corner. It's our toolbox that contains 19 different tools. Those tools are, respectively, Rectangle Select, Move Select to Pixels, Move Selection, Lasso Select, Ellipse Select, Zoom, Pan, Magic Wand, Paint Bucket, Gradient, Eraser, Paintbrush, Pencil, Color Picker, Recolor, Clone Stamp, Text, Line Slash Curve, and, of course, Shapes. What a mouthful! But anyway, there is all sorts of things that you can actually do with these tools beyond just their inherent basic functions. For instance, the paintbrush here has brush size, hardness, spacing, and fill options. So I'm not going to delve into those too much, but I would say go ahead and mess around with them. It's going to be mostly aesthetic stuff, so find your style and go with what you like. With that being said, let's take a transition on over to the lower left-hand corner where we have the Colors window. Now the Colors window is pretty self-explanatory. There's a little more option that gives you a lot more control over what you can do. And it also gives you a few more preset colors here, which is nice to have. Um, that's pretty much the gist of it. I won't get into how colors work because I'm sure that you know how colors work. However, I will mention one thing, and that is that you can actually wield two colors at once. And what I mean by that is, say I wanted a red and a blue, I can do that, and then maybe go up to a rectangle that I'm filling and giving a border, which when I draw, you'll notice is actually my primary color, with my fill being my secondary color. This is also easy to switch around while I'm still drawing the shape. I simply go down here, give it a little click, and now it's switched. Very cool stuff. And that's pretty much it for the color window. So let's kick things up a notch a little bit, shall we? This is a pretty simplistic image. In fact, it's really kind of a pain to work with because if I want to do anything to that box I just drew, it's going to affect the background. It's all on one layer. If I deleted this, it deletes the background and my box. So what do I do? Well, you guessed it. I'm going to go to the lower right hand corner and I'm going to make some new layers. By creating a new layer here, I've given myself essentially a brand new canvas. If I were to hide my original background layer, which I do by clicking that checkbox, you can see there's nothing on the image anymore. So maybe I want to do something a little bit different. Maybe I'll make my box here, and then I'll re-enable my background, and I don't know, maybe I'll give it a red back. Well, yeah, let's do a red background. Now this is graphically speaking horrifying but in terms of our actual software it's very nice to work with because now I have my background in a separate box here that I can move around said background without actually impacting what the background looks like and if I took that a step further I could maybe put some text on my box that said hi or hello bump up the size so I can see it and now it's present on the box or at least it seems that way but if I want to go back to my box layer, I can move it around and the text stays in place. Or vice versa, I can move the text around and my box stays in place. This becomes super useful when you want to do things like adding shadows. And it's generally just a good practice to have because sometimes you want to mess around on a particular piece of your image without actually impacting the rest of it. Now then, before we get to the effects, I have one more thing to show you. So I've kind of given myself a new blank canvas because up in the upper right hand corner, you may have noticed there is a history window. And what this is, is essentially a really, really flushed out version of undo and redo. So the way it works is say I have my blank canvas here. I can draw a line. Maybe I start drawing my name. And each time that I perform an action in paint.net, it is logged here in my history window. Now I can go back to whatever point in the image that I would like. Maybe I don't want 
to have T's anymore. So I could undo the last four things that I've done and it's just MA instead of Matt. I can also use this backwards. So maybe I want to bring back the T, that is the third T, and maybe I want to do my full name. And I can do that just as I did. This is a really useful tool. I found myself using this history that will a lot to experiment with the effects that we are about to delve into. Which brings us to a whole different place, that is the paint.net forums. So this forum page has all sorts of different plugins that you can install to paint.net which you're going to want to do because paint.net, while it does come with some pre-installed, they're pretty simplistic and there's a lot that you can get for this software. I recommend Boltbait's GPU Accelerated Plugin Pack. Big old long name, but it's a great little installer. You download it right here and it installs all these effects and it's just a really great pack to have. I've installed this one alongside a few others and we're going to go take a look at those right about now. So, let's have some fun. I'm going to create a couple of layers here, and maybe I want to make a little logo or something. Maybe I'll just make a little token style logo. What I'll do is create a little circle here. Maybe uh, make it a circle, not a square. I'll make it roughly 380 by 380, just because it's some number that I picked out. And this is where effects are super useful. As you can see, I have artistic, blurs, color, distort, fill, noise, and all sorts of other categories. But where I'm going to look is object. Object effects generally take effect on, you guessed it, an object. So in this case, my circle might want to be aligned in the center. I have this little tool here. I can actually align it in all sorts of different spots, but most commonly, I'd probably be using center. Now I've got a circle centered on the screen, and maybe I want to put some text on it. Maybe I'll put some simple red text, bump up the size to maybe not quite so big, and say, logo. Now, this same effect can be reused on this layer, and I have a circle with text logo in the middle. Very cool, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. These effects are extensive, and this is another thing that I would recommend you experiment with because as you can see, each of these menus can have anywhere from a few to a few dozen effects. So some of the most common ones, however, let's take a look at are drop shadow. I can change my shadow to be white, maybe stand out a little bit, adjust the distance, make it a little bit bigger, maybe get a little more bold here. And now I've got some drop shadow. Maybe I want to do a regular shadow on my circle as well. I can turn it back to black and look at that. Now I've got so much more dimension in just a couple of effects. There's also some other pretty common effects in distort. I see a lot of my friends and I using this one here, crystallized, and you look at that. It makes such a cool texture. I just turned a circle into a pretty decent looking logo in just a matter of three different effects, which you can simply undo if you decide that you don't like them later. I really, really, really recommend that you start getting used to effects as soon as you get this software. It's just gonna make your work better and although it may seem a little loaded at first, you might be learning your way around things, everybody ends up getting there in the end, or at least in my experience. Which brings me to some of the real world instances of paint.net. For instance, check out these three channels. These are my good friends Animazu, Nautix, and Winterbub, who are all, by the way, part of a little group I'm starting up called Eclipse. Feel free to check that out in the link in the description. But they all use paint.net for their graphics. That's right, every single one of them uses it for their thumbnails. If you were to scroll through, you can see that some of them are similar, but realistically, they all have their own different styles to them. Particularly different is Winterbub's content, because he does more Pokemon, whereas the other two are both doing manga reviews. So they're a little bit more similar. But all three of them are making amazing, high-quality thumbnails using paint.net, which just goes to show the power that you have behind this piece of software. Not to mention, everything I make. If you go to my channel, you may have noticed that I have a neat little picture here. I made this in paint.net. There is truly no end to the possibilities with this software, and I would highly recommend it. In fact, I would highly recommend donating to it. I personally love this software, and I'd hate to see it die out. Feel free to give them a little donation via PayPal, or even just buy the software. But yeah, otherwise guys, I hope you enjoy this little introduction to my favorite little piece of image editing software. If you have any suggestions for videos in the future, I hope to make more tech-related content as things come along. I've been very busy this summer with work. But yeah, leave a little subscribe and a like if you feel you... Had a good time here in this video, and otherwise, I will see you next time.